Uh, good morning, uh, all of you. Uh, I'm uh, doing this in English because we have a, uh, a speaker from uh, the United States uh, who is in the Netherlands uh, right now. Uh, we have uh, Dennis Christensen from uh, Pebble and Fuchs uh, Control. He will tell you more about uh, that, that combination. And he will uh, tell you more about uh, well, Ether connectivity and also different protocols, uh, mainly uh, IO-Link. Uh, so, Dennis, uh, welcome uh, in this uh, webinar. It's great that you can uh, tell us more about these subjects. Um, the presentation is already on. Uh, I will uh, turn my video and uh, sound off. And then the, and then the stage is yours. So, good luck. Thank you, Suzanne. So, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is uh, Dennis Christensen and I work within the strategic marketing group within Pepperl and Fuchs. Uh, some of you may be familiar with our company as we've been a long time uh, partnership with Telerex, now Eight Legs, uh, for almost 30 years. And I've been working with the Telerex uh, branch for, for many years, uh, upward in the 15, 16 years. So I'm very familiar with your operations um, and uh, today we'll talk about industrial ethernet and the technologies and products that we sell around that. So first thing I want to mention is uh, Comptrol was acquired by Pepperl and Fuchs in February of 2019. Uh, we are, Pepperl & Fuchs is an industrial manufacturer uh, based in Germany. Uh, Comtrol now serves as the competency center of excellence for the Pepperl & Fuchs group for industrial connectivity and industrial ethernet. The groups within Pepperl & Fuchs include uh, the BDT division, which was mostly industrial sensing and vision. Uh, Comtrol, which is the company that I came from, is now the center of excellence for industrial ethernet and connectivity. Uh, we have other business groups in the company, eSpace, uh, laser scanning and measurement, Neoception is for IoT solutions, and we have eCom, which is our mobile applications and mobile displays uh, division. Uh, within Pepper and Folks, we cover a wide range of technologies, mostly uh, uh, from the sensor on to the infrastructure. So we provide a, a number of industrial sensors and solutions from the sensor layer up into the cloud, including proximity switches, uh, photoelectric uh, sensors, uh, vision and laser systems. But today we're gonna focus mostly on industrial communication and connectivity. Now, when you ask people or you ask yourselves, you know, what is industrial ethernet? You're going to get a variety of answers because it's a pretty vague term in this industry and it covers a lot of different technologies. So some people look at it from a very different perspective. Uh, the perspective that I'm going to be focusing on is more how it applies in our factory automation space and process automation space. So when we're talking, or at least when, when I am referring to industrial ethernet, I'm going to be covering terms like ethernet IP, Profinet, Modbus, OPC UA, and MQTT. So specifically, ethernet IP refers to the Allen Bradley slash Rockwell environment with PLCs, factory automation processes, um, but it's mostly a proprietary ethernet that is specific to the Allen Bradley Rockwell ecosystem. Profinet, on the other hand, is a Siemens architecture and Siemens uh, uh, ecosystem. So, uh, when you're talking Modbus, you're typically talking about a Schneider Electric uh, ecosystem, and those are all mostly for the factory automation space. 
Within the last several years, you've had technologies like OPC UA and MQTT that are serving the market for the IT space. So within this industry, you're seeing a little bit of a convergence between uh, factory automation applications and PLC control and enterprise systems, IT, server rooms, and data centers. We're starting to see a merge in those type of technologies and we are well positioned for that. Uh, the first part I want to cover is IOLINK. So, um, IOLINK is uh, uh, sensor technology and actuator technology, mostly on the electrical layer that uh, is replacing four to 20 milliamps digital input, digital output, um, the sensor layer or electrical layer connectivity in these type of applications. So one thing I wanna point out about IOLINK is it's standardized among most sensor manufacturers and most uh, actuator company manufacturers. So specifically what our product does in the IOLINK space is it is an interface between the IOLINK devices on the electrical layer. So you can take any sensor from any manufacturer that supports IOLINK, you can plug it in and it's um, automatically going to start communicating and working uh, mostly kind of like a plug and play system. But then importantly, then we take that uh, IOLINK communications or that IOLINK systems and we connect them into the industrial ethernet architectures and also the IT architectures. Uh, this is a, a product slide that shows how they look. So the important thing I want to uh, talk to you about here is the interfaces uh, come in a variety of shapes and, and port densities, uh, mostly for inside the cabinet applications are usually an IP20 uh, rating and outside the cabinet is an IP67 rated. And all of our systems include what we call multi-link. And we'll get into that here right now. So what Multilink does is it takes the interface between the electrical layer. So you have to kind of look at this product in, in two functions. You have function one being the connection or the, uh, the connectivity between the electrical layer sensors, okay, and the interface, that's connection number one. And then connection number two is your industrial ethernet segmentations, okay? So we can take the data coming from the sensors and actuators coming from an IOLINK interface, and then we bridge into the industrial ethernet layer. And when I talk about the industrial ethernet layer, it's Profinet, Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, OPC UA, and MQTT. Now, specifically why this is interesting is we can talk or we can communicate multiple architectures all at the same time, okay? This is a good example of that, okay? So on the bottom layer, you're having the connectivity between sensors and actuators. You take a cable, you plug it into the interface, it works. You take that same cable and plug it into a different manufacturer that supports IOLINK, it's gonna work. It's plug and play or mostly plug and play and it creates that connection automatically. Now what we do that's really interesting is now we talk to multiple architectures and the way we've designed the system is everything can be turned on and everything can be turned off, okay? So for example, if you want to take a distance sensor and you connect it into the IOLINK interface and you want to turn on a connection to a Allen Bradley PLC using Ethernet IP that is supported, you can turn on that connection, okay? So that's that middle layer of PLCs that you see there. 
Okay, so now you have the connection from the PLC into the interface and then from the interface to the master. Okay, now, for example, if you wanted to add an HMI that supported an HMI or SCADA system that supported Modbus, you can keep that connection to Ethernet IP or into the Rockwell PLC, and then you can turn on a separate and independent connection into the Schneider environment, okay? So now you have data coming into the PLC and that's very happy, okay? Now you can have a separate and independent connection going into a Modbus system that may be interesting or useful for an HMI or a SCADA uh, or data acquisition system, okay? So now you have two connections, okay? Now we can take that another step further and we can use that channel that's kind of to the right there, okay? Where now also you can have your Allen Bradley connection, you can have your Modbus connection, but now let's say you wanna bring in enterprise applications or uh, other applications such as SAP or Oracle or Microsoft Azure or cloud-based systems, Kepware, you know, any type of software system, as long as it has an OPC UA interface, we can turn on the OPC UA interface. And now you have a connection to the PLC because the PLC is proprietary and it needs it in a certain way. So we open that connection that's open and clear. We now have a, a connection to the Modbus system for the HMI or SCADA data acquisition system. And let's say we opened up a third channel into uh, Amazon Web Services, okay? So now each system is getting what they want from the, the electrical layer sensors and actuators directly into the systems that they want to use that in, okay? So specifically, we can support with this architecture and this connectivity method eight separate channels or 16 instances of those applications, okay? Now the also way that this is designed is you can turn anything on and you can turn anything off. So if you do not want a connection to the PLC, you can turn off Profinet or you could turn off Ethernet IP and not use it. So then you could use Modbus or OPC UA, okay? Or you can turn off Profinet, you can turn off Modbus, and you can only use OPC UA or MQTT or one of the uh, IT type of protocols. So in this actual scenario, you're making the PLC for data acquisition 100% optional in the applications. And that's why it's really interesting and there's a lot of engineering work that's happening right now uh, to support these type of applications. Cloud connectivity is, is a big topic of conversation right now. Industrial Ethernet is a big topic of conversation right now. And this solution here fits really nice within that mix to support these architectures because each software system may have their own way of doing something. So um, the, the message here is multi-link. We can turn on, turn off any of these technologies to make the customer application more interesting. Uh, so how does this all work together? Okay, so this is an application that we did. This has to do with machine builders. So you'll see the machines, uh, they're kind of small pictures and I understand that, but uh, you had a machine uh, builders on the upper left-hand side and they wanted to extract, they, they wanted to do a couple things. Number one, they wanted to run the machine. So through the machine, which had a PLC inside the machine, we turned on uh, a Profinet or an Ethernet IP connection because the PLC was also doing other functions within the machine. Okay, but also they wanted to use the data that is being generated by that machine and also specifically for those devices 
into other business intelligence and other uh, systems and other groups other than just manufacturing, okay? So manufacturing can have access to the data, but accounting may want access to this data and legal may want access to the data. But the applications that legal uses and the applications that accounting uses may be very different, okay? So we can all open up instances where they now have a direct interface directly into, in this specific case, the IOLINK master that is aggregating all of these different things and bringing them into higher level systems so that they can make their business logic and business rules to however they want to do it, okay? So specifically, in this specific application, they wanted the manufacturing statistics of the machine that is printing out or stamping out widgets. They wanted to know how many per hour, what the rate is on how many uh, uh, raw materials and, and goods that they needed to get through. But then they also wanted it for redundancy and they also wanted real time tracking of their um, of their goods, of their finished goods. OK, so within that system, they can populate all of these different applications and share them in the enterprise by linking factories together, linking lines together and linking buildings together and creating a, a better overall picture of their manufacturing health. Uh, here's another example of where they used IOLINK specifically for the factory automation space. So this is a robotic palletizing uh, application. Um, they're using industrial sensing uh, technologies made by Purple and Fuchs, specifically laser scanners, specifically the R2000 family. And what they're using is they're bringing that data from those R2000s into an IOLINK master. From there, they then send that information off to the applications that they need in order to process that business intelligence properly. Um, anybody who has worked at Telerex for a long time is probably familiar with our IOLINK uh, industrial ethernet gateways. So they work very similar to the IOLINK platform. Um, they are mostly used for serial communications or serial electrical layer and then bridging uh, industrial ethernet topologies, uh, connecting the two together. So the electrical layer, when I talk about that, I'm specifically talking about RS-232 or nine wire, uh, nine wire serial communications, four wire 422 electrical connections or two wire 4S-485 connections. So the specific job of these gateways is to take electrical layer communications, bring that into the gateway, and then hand that data off to a different system, whether it be Profinet, Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, or some other type of network, okay? Uh, the original uh, platform has been on the market for about 20 years. So it's been a long time, but they're used uh, in every factory and every application you can think of. It's a connectivity piece. Now these are all come in a variety of shapes, functions, form factors, industrial ratings. Uh, they're all different and we have different options depending upon what the application is. Uh, we have also come out with a line of industrial switches. Uh, this specifically is, we refer to it as the ICRL or Industrial uh, Communication Rocket Links uh, from Comtrol was referred to as the Rocket Links platform. Uh, they're industrial switches. They have industrial components and are made uh, with mostly extended temperature uh, ratings that are required in more industrialized situations. Um, 
They also support uh, different technologies like fiber optics, uh, gigabit ethernet, power over ethernet, and uh, power over ethernet being 802.11, which is 15.4 watt, and uh, 802.11 AT, which is the 30 watt standard. So both industrial ethernet switches and power over ethernet switches, again, they come in a variety of sizes and shapes and port densities, okay? And uh, this is just a little slide with the type code and the item number on it. Again, another comparison for the platform. Um, the pl most platforms support what's called an SFP connection, and that would be you can buy a SFP connector that goes into the switch that provides uh, either 10, 100 gigabit downstream, but fiber optics on the upstream. Uh, very good and used uh, very extensively in traffic and transportation applications, vision applications, um, uh, building automation applications, um, you know, it pretty much any switch talks to an IOLINK platform or our device master platform. So every single time you sell a, a, an IOLINK master or one of the device master platforms, every single one of those contains an ethernet connection. The ethernet connection is brought in by the rocket links model or the industrial switches, which then talk to the other layer switches within the network. Uh, some applications where this is interesting is uh, mobile applications, uh, specifically for our rocket links platform. Um, we have models of our switches that support 12 volt uh, Electrical connections, which is really interesting in mobile applications, police cars, emergency equipment, forklifts, taxi cabs, uh, things like that, where they can use the power off the battery at 12 volts, but within power over the Ethernet specifically, they need to boost that voltage rating up to 48 volts, which most cameras and most power over Ethernet equipment is uh, supporting. So we take that voltage from the battery and we boost it up to 48 volt and you now have the connectivity into the 48 volt products. Uh, another application where these are interesting is uh, wastewater treatment plants, uh, electrical grids, uh, SCADA systems, PLCs. Again, selling switches is easy because everybody uses them. OK, so most of the time or most of the questions about switches are going to come from how many connections do you have and what kind of form factor it is and what, you know, do you support fiber or do you support gigabit? Those are the kind of questions that you're going to get. And the applications are endless. They're pretty much everywhere. The message I want to give with our switch line is they are industrial rated components. Uh, they are industrial rated for the applications that they're going into because they may be sensitive to, uh, to heat or to pressure or to uh, different factors. Uh, and with that, uh, we have a couple minutes left. I will open the floor up for Q&A. Uh, if there are any questions about the material, I'll be happy to go through them. 